Welcome to Stock Labs. This is sort of the main page. This market overview page is going to have sort of the majority of the top down information about the market um, in real time that you'll be able to sort of get the lay of the land um, very quickly as to how the market's looking that day or over you know a certain amount of time. Uh, across the top, these are custom indices. They're built um, using market cap as the primary filter. And then there's also volume filters underneath of them. So Stock Labs pennies, these are stocks that are you know under a quarter billion market cap. Um, there's about 150 stocks in here or 250 stocks in here. There's small caps, uh, 150 stocks under a billion market cap, mega caps and terra caps. There's 50 stocks each. Mega caps is 50 to 150 billion and terra caps is anything above that. So like for instance, today you can sort of see, you know, the market's basically being led by the terra cap stuff. So the very, the very large stocks are just dragging the indices around, um, you know, wherever they want to go. The rest of the market has sort of been lackluster underneath today. Um, across the middle, this OBOS, the stands for overbought, oversold. And this is one of the primary algorithms uh, that Stock Labs is running on the market uh, at all times. So this oscillator here is, you know, the daily readings uh, for each day. And then there's the overbought and the oversold thresholds that sort of show, um, you know, whether the market is overbought or oversold on that particular day. Um, you have this on the right. So it, right now it's on three month, there's six, 12, 10, 20, 30. So usually we'll default to six month or 12 month. And what this does is it changes the bands that determine overbought and oversold. So the sample period that it's using for each one of these is longer, which, you know, the way the market goes, the longer the sample period. So if you take like a 10 year sample period, there's no, um, there's no actual oversold reading on like what you would call a 10 year basis, um, you know, in this, la in this last, uh, well, this is three months, but if I go to 10 years, we got one. So that's basically the exact bottom from, or close to it from, um, you know, like the COVID sort of pandemic crash, if you want to call it that. Um, so we're usually we're usually on shorter time frames than that. Twelve month is pretty good. Um, let's see. So year to date, if we're using our twelve month uh, sample period, we have three uh, we have three individual ones, and then there were there was a cluster of them right here at the end of September just recently, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so these are pretty good algorithms. They're going to really sort of give you. A little bit of an you know an advantage um as far as marking bottoms and things because it's it's really measuring true stress points especially on the oversold side the overbought side is a little you know is a little different sometimes when we're overbought it's sort of a momentum trigger as opposed to a i gotta let somebody in it's sort of a momentum trigger as opposed to um you know, like the market's gonna fall off. Although you can sort of see these last couple back in February, that sort of marked the high for the most part of the market in general. Um, and when I say the market in general, I just mean sort of the universe of stocks. So if you look at something that's not a cap weighted index, like um, if you look at IWM, which is a little more equal weighted, it's really been in a range this in, from you know this February sort of high till the rest of you know for the rest of the year since then. Um, what you can do is look at the statistics for any one of these signals. So we were I was showing the twelve month signal. So this is twelve month oversold and yeah it has more or less 100% uh, win rate. You know, we have the times up, times down. So you can sort of see 
how each signal played out the number the number of signals for each um you know the number of successful signals versus unsuccessful signals and the average return for each one um and we have technical we have this algorithm runs on technicals and hybrid so if i go back here you can see we're on the we're in the hybrid pane right now um if i click to technicals it's going to be pretty similar although sometimes the they're sometimes off by you know they could be within a day of each other or a couple days of each other and um or sometimes the technical one will fire and that would be it the hybrid one won't fire the hybrid one incorporates the fundamental score for the market so these these scores are all based on um a bunch of different factors um and they make the they make the score the score gets tracked and then if we get a signal the signal gets back tested cataloged with the rest of the statistics and then for the next one we'll have an idea of what we should expect as far as you know the next you know on any subsequent signals um so that's kind of an just a bit of an overview of overbought oversold there's another um so like I mentioned, this isn't going to tell you anything like for right now, today, there's no, you know, there is no signal. So there's nothing I can do with this, with this information. Um, but there's the real time um, setting on intelligence. And what this is doing is, whereas overbought, oversold is measuring once a particular threshold hits, the intelligence algorithm basically has access to the data for any score. So it's based on just this, this score and it looks at other times that the market has had this particular score and what the forward returns were from there. So for today, right now, we have 2.03 on, I'll just focus, I'll just use tech, tech score. We have 2.03 tech score and in the last, year so i can back test it for a number of periods but in the last year <clears throat> um any we've had 17 times that the score has been around this 2.03 and i say around because we sort of allow a little bit of a tolerance that's what this granularity is so the default is 0 0.1 so 1 1.93 to 2.13, you know, plus or minus the granularity. So one tenth, so one tenth up, one tenth down. Anything in that range qualifies to get put into these statistics. So we've had 17, uh, well, not 17. We've had 17, but the some of them were more recent. So their counts haven't gotten, they haven't gotten full seven day return counts. That's why there's, you know, there's only 15 here and here. So how many days ago? Sometime the last week or something, we were down um, in this 2.38 area and they're still being logged as far as statistically. Um, so what you would take out of this is that, yeah, I mean, the market's going to be pretty, um, I guess, uneventful based on this today. Um, you know, it might, you know, drop a little bit, but generally the trend is up, you know, after two weeks, it's up 1%, which isn't a whole lot, but it's, um, you know, it's not telling you, oh, there's going to be a crazy rally, but it's also telling you that you're not really in any sort of imminent danger as far as how the market's positioned currently. Now this score will change throughout the day. So you might want to focus more on the close, but it is all real time. So you can, you know, you can feel free to draw your conclusions at any point. Um, but yeah, if the market really, uh, I don't know, if something ha if something crazy happened in the market dropped, you know, the S&P dropped, I don't know, 50 handles into the close, this score would probably be down in the, you know, one point something. It'd probably be, you know, 1.8 or something like that, um, depending on how all the other factors sort of played into it. There's macro factors that are under the surface, you know, so bond moves, Bond moves are accounted for, commodities moves are accounted for, Forex moves are accounted for, and they all get, um, 
they all get melded together to come up with these scores for the overall market. Um, so you have real time, you have overbought, oversold. Those are gonna be your primary sort of indicators for how the overall market is looking on any particular day. Um, and we go a little further down. These are just general market stats. A lot of them at the start are fundamental. So, you know, we see like earnings are up, um, you know, you can see revenues, revenue growth. We have certain, you know, important ratios. And then um, if you scroll over, you have overbought, oversold. So these overbought, oversold stats that I was, and intelligence um, algorithms that I was talking about for the overall market, they're also applied to every single stock and ETF in, um, in the database. So where you can see this graph for, um, for the overall market, I can also see the same thing for say a particular stock. So if I just go to Amazon and click on the algorithm, this will just give me the data view of it. Uh, so you get, again, the same thing. So I can adjust the sample period if I go to 12 months. And then over here, I can see the, the same chart. So this will, this will let you, you know, not just look at the market overall, but you know, you could investigate any individual stock or ETF you wanted. And um, again, we have the same, the same layout for statistics as far as um, what they would, what each signal would look like. So um, you can see even for something large like Amazon that you would expect to track the market, the statistics are a little different than what the um, what the overall market statistics were. So it, it it really is sort of looking at things on a case by case basis. In this case, you'd say if Amazon hit this twelve month oversold signal, it's not necessarily bullish because what it's doing is for the next week, basically, you know, this is, this is trading days. So three to five trading days, you're going to get some continuation down. At least you have in the last year. Um, yeah. And even more recently, it's a little, it's a little firmer of a, of a picture. Um, so you have two, two signals in the last six months and both signals, the stock kept sliding, um, after you got that, after you got that um, twelve-month oversold signal, um, so yeah, that shows. Yeah, these are just at the end number above two hundred day, number above fifty day, etc. Um, those are just sort of fifty-two week highs, fifty-two week lows. Those just give you an idea of, you know, what the what the strength of the market is overall. Um, we also have the market divided up into uh, industries and sectors. So these are the primary, the primary sectors that the market's divided up into. You know, all the majors are in here, tech, healthcare, financials, consumer goods. And then we have these columns that sort of show you these tech and hybrid scores. These are basically the average tech and hybrid score for um, each category. So again, stocks and everything, they're all rated with, um, they're all rated by their technical scores, their hybrid scores, um, well, and obviously, and fundamental score as well, which is part of the hybrid score. Um, we can scroll over, you can actually add columns to this if you want. So we have a bunch of different criteria that you can um, insert into this table and look at um, if you're interested in, in a certain piece of data as it relates to that sector. Uh, most of the time you won't do that on this page, but you will do that on like inside your screener, which is sort of the full screener, um, the full screener tool that'll let you go through even more stuff. Um, and then at the bottom of this, these are custom indices that are made inside Stock Lab. So what these will be are, if there's a particular trend or a particular you know, niche set of stocks that we're going to want to track for, you know, potentially forming a trend or giving us some sort of insight into the market in general. Uh, Fly will put them in here and we'll just, we'll start to track them um, as far as how, how they're performing. So say if most recently, I think the most recent one was um, 
Mm, where is it? I thought there was. It might just be in Fly's watch list, but he made one for, um, say, like quote unquote Trump stocks because you know when they had that that spec that got released, there were a bunch of what you might call um, related stocks. Um, sort of running as well. So they got dumped in there to, okay, I need to mute someone. Okay, there we go. I got you. Um, yeah, so there were a bunch of related stocks that were sort of tagging along with the trend that we um, were starting to hop on, hop on with. Um, I showed this while we were sort of waiting around a little bit. And this is a newswire that's basically curated from Twitter, sort of like an RSS feed of just, it's strictly finance stuff. Um, so all of the major most inf and most informative accounts are going to be on here and you can just come on here to get sort of a um, view of the real time news. Some people will keep this up as a, just a second screen on another monitor just because they like it as their news feed or um, there's an option to just have this here at the bottom, you saw like I clicked a little arrow and it popped up. So now if I go away from this screen, it'll just have the most recent ones populating down here um, in front of me. So you see like this new one just popped up. Um, I keep this minimized though. So I uh, will just leave it on full screen for the demo here. Industries, this is a little bit of a graphical view of what was on the other page. You can see the returns over different time frames. So you come in here, the default is one day because you kind of want to see what's going on today, but you can also, you know, maybe see trends in the market. So obviously basic materials have been a huge outperformer throughout the summer um, and into, you know, so far, you know, so far leading into this end of the year, the rest of the market has been a little bit hit or miss. I mean, some, some are up a little bit, but, you know, things like healthcare have been um, sort of struggling. Um, if we want to go to year to date, a little bit of the same picture, just the returns are different. So basic materials, obviously a huge outperformer. And then down here, you have every subsector that makes up any one of these. So they'll be labeled with which larger industry they go with and then you have all the same sort of data uh for the for the individual sector if you want to really narrow in on say i don't know specific semiconductors or anything like that um our next thing so we'll move on to screener this is probably next to the um Next to the overbought and oversold and the intelligence algorithms, this would be probably the thing that day to day you might use the most. This is gonna let you more or less identify anything, you know, identify any stock or sector in the market based on almost any criteria that you could probably think to use, including all of the all the data that and tools that Stock Labs has that itself generate so sort of like more proprietary um proprietary stuff so i'll just start up on quick screens so this is i'll go to top rated and that let me talk about this okay so top rated and high volume delta so volume delta this vd is the volume that the stock is trading on the day it's prorated you know, down to the, it's, it's calculated every, you know, real time. So every minute we're looking at how much volume has that stock traded? What will that translate to, to the end of the day? And then comparing that to the average of the past 30 days. So for example, if a stock trades a million shares a day normally, and at 11 AM, it's on pace to trade 3 million shares that day, this volume delta score for the stock will be plus 200% because it's on pace to trade 3 million and 3 million is 200% more than 1 million, if that makes sense. And they're all calculated real time. So these scores will change. 
throughout the day. So for something like volume delta, if it's up, you know, this one's 300, 300% on the day currently. And if it stick, if it keeps sticking that into end of day, it's, it's a little more reliable. If it's, if in like the first 15 minutes of the day, something is, um, you know, crazy high, but then that, that morning volume immediately disappears, the stock will get pulled from this list. Well, I mean, it won't get pulled, but you'll see it'll start moving down the list, moving down the list until, you know, it finally drops off if it, if it, if it comes to that. Um, this is all sort of powered by this live feature. If I, you see these green arrows and red arrows, these are sort of reordering the stocks. Okay, this blue line that just came in, this stock just freshly got insert, it freshly met the criteria for the screen and got inserted into the list um, right then and there. Um, so without this live feature, what would happen is the screen wouldn't, it wouldn't do that. It would just, it would give you the results that you had on the load up and then it wouldn't add any new, it wouldn't add any new things on from there. The data within the table is still obviously live, but the screen itself, so you, you see there's no more green and red arrows. So it's not reordering the screen or anything. And there's not gonna be any new stocks that um, get inserted in here while this is off of live. So I'll just put it back on live and okay. The, oh, there's another volume tool I will show. Yeah, so the green arrows are back. That's why I was, I was just waiting for that to, to sort of happen. Um, our other volume tool is the volume surge analyzer. Um, this is similar to the volume delta, although if you remember the volume delta is sort of making its calculations based on what full day's volume would would turn out to be volume delta or volume surge analyzer is allowing you to sort of narrow in on different time frames um, that you want to investigate. So there's five minute, 15 minute, and 30 minute. The most common are five minute and 15 minute. And common, what I mean is that which ones people are using the most, especially for um, you know, shorter term trading for the day or for that week. Uh, there's also a one minute. Uh, one that I'm not showing on here, but I can put it on here. So there's a one minute one. And did it go? Okay. And okay, so what this is going to do is say for five minute, it's looking at the current five minute candle and comparing it to the past 30 five minute candles. So whichever interval you're on, it's looking back 30 of that interval. So for 15 minute, it's looking at current 15 minute candle, comparing it to the past 30, 15 minute candles and doing the difference in the current one versus the average of those other, other candles. So you can sort of mess, you can mess around with these parameters. Right now, I just, this screen, I just have set on 15 minute, the screen is ordered by 15 minute too. So I can click on any of these columns and it'll, it'll order the screen based on that column. Obviously that's something people are probably familiar with as far as an interface goes. And then um, I have it sound over a hundred, hundred percent. So only stocks that are trading double their, or their 15 minute candle is trading more than double the average of the last 30, 15 minute candles will appear on this screen. So if I go to the very bottom of this um, and I go to the very end, yeah, so there's nothing, the screen ends, there's nothing, you know, below 100%. Actually, it cuts off at, yeah. So it cuts off at 101%. That's the end of, that's the end because it's filtering out anything less than that. Um, pretty self explanatory. Um, Okay, there are a bunch of other screens. The Fly uses a lot of these ready-made screens. These are the ones that he's he's using. Obviously, he, a lot of people are interested in you know how he trades and where he finds his trades. And based on you know sort of the market we have that day, any one of these screens will be something that he's 
looking at to um, to sort of narrow down on what his picks are going to be uh, for that day or for the next couple of days. Uh, newly added is um, a lot of crypto, a lot of crypto coins. Um, I don't even know the word for it. Yeah, a lot of crypto got added to Stock Labs in the last month or so. So any of these tools, as far as volume tools um, or any sort of price, um, you know, price parameters or anything like that that you want to use, you can apply them to cryptos. So right now, um, this is okay. There's not a whole lot on here right now, but. Um, I can show you this percent change feature anyway. So this percent change feature is similar. Well, not similar, but what it's doing is it's looking at the change in the stock where norm. Okay. So this percent change up here is your session change. Everyone's familiar with that. But if you want to know some, if something is running currently so you come in here you look at just the session change you say okay snx is up seven percent is it running uh i don't know because maybe it was up ten percent earlier and now it's backing off and it's up seven percent so maybe that seven percent is like you know i shouldn't care about it these percent change um calculations are calculating the change in that actual time frame so what how much has the stock changed in the last 30 seconds how much has the stock changed in the last minute five minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes so you can see an idea of is a stock move is a stock you know moving at this moment as opposed to um, has it already made its move for the day? Uh, I'm going to take this. Let me take this off crypto. Actually, I'll, I'll leave ETFs out of it too. Okay. So and you can obviously adjust anything. Um, that you want in here uh, to be, you know, to fit any sort of parameters that you're trying to fit um, as far as what criteria you want to be met for your screen. Um, there is also, um, there's also Fly's quant screen. And this screen is the basis of I clicked it right. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, this screen is the basis of his quantitative portfolio that he runs, um, which is a portfolio that more or less it rebalances once a month on the first trading day of the month. And it only takes 5% positions. So 20 stocks at any, you know, it always has 20 stocks. They're all 5% allocated at the start of the, at the start of the month. And first and foremost, wait, why am I not on? Okay. I was wondering why the screen was moving so much because... <laughs> Okay, so this is the this is the growth quant screen, but okay. So first and foremost, the stocks have to meet his criteria, fundamental criteria, and then um, how he actually narrows down the twenty stocks that are going to be in there is that this list is sorted by what's called the SA what's called the SAA score, and this stands for Stock Labs Advanced Algorithm. So back toward the beginning of this, I was talking about tech and hybrid scores. Um, the tech scores are technical, you know, they have a bunch of technical factors. The hybrid scores incorporate the technical factors and the fundamental scores for the, for the stock, but these scores can be somewhat volatile. So if I just, if I had a screen and all I was doing was looking for the highest tech scores of the day, um, that might be okay, but also it's not going to give me so much information about what maybe the next day or the next week would look like. 
So, you know, for instance, this stock 3.43 tech score is pretty high. Um, okay, Cloudflare is pretty high, but this, this score could drop to 2.8 tomorrow, which is sort of a middle of the road, middle of the road score. I'm not gonna be, you know, very excited about that. So these SAA scores, what they do is they more or less smooth out what those tech and hybrid scores look like over a longer time frame. So an SAA score of one month, you know, with with based on one month of data is going to be sort of the strongest stocks, the strongest rated stocks um, over the last one month based on their tech and hybrid scores. So you have this, this SAA you can look at over a bunch of different time frames. Um, I have one just to show it. SAA. SAA, where is it? Oh, did I click on something? Oh, this is my Delta screen. And I think, I think Comcast is throttling me right now. Um, okay, I'll click on this one. I don't think this is it, but yeah. So this is a, this is an SAA screen that I have that combines the SAA score and the intelligence score um, that I was talking about earlier. Like intelligence is um, the algorithm that's assessing what the forward returns are from any one um, any one score. But you can see, so this if I'm just talking about SAA score, you know, one week, two week, one month, three month six month, one year and year to date. And you could sort of think of, um, you know, like the one year SAA score, you could use it, you could basically use it as a replacement for something like a sharp ratio. So a lot of people will go and screen for, you know, stocks that have a certain sharp ratio to include them in whatever strategy they're running. Um, this uh, one year SAA score could replace that, could replace that sharp ratio and it's almost i think it's i think it's actually sort of better than sharp um just because the you know like a sharp ratio is more or less just based on price performance whereas the um this saa score being a uh being sort of a derivative of the tech and hybrid scores that stock labs has it has a lot of the um fundamental it has a lot of fundamental data you know under the surface of this you know built into the score um and yeah so that those are sort of the primary thing i mean if there's things that people want to see in the screener i can show them but um there's really so much that you can build out of it you know these are all the different criteria you could include in any uh particular screen so you know obviously all this pretty common, this stuff is pretty common. You know, you want stuff from 52 week highs, 52 week lows, um, where they are relative to uh, 50 or 100 day moving averages. Um, fundamental data, like um, anything that would be in financial, you know, er earnings reports or anything like that. So, you know, you can see year over year changes, quarter over quarter, you know, quarter over quarter growth. Um, trailing 12 months, et cetera. Um, you can bring in some of the intelligence tools to the screener. Um, obviously the volume tools I talked about. Um, price targets, price targets is a good, um, is a good feature. So Stock Labs will, um, let me find it, price targets, price targets. So Stock Labs will take the, um, earnings estimates for the coming year of a stock and apply it to its, you know, sort of median um, PE ratio or sales ratio, um, price to sales ratio, um, and then come up with a price target for you um, right here in the, um, in the screen. So this is saying, <clears throat> Uh, you can see here. So 
what are our price targets? Apple price target, 155, Microsoft, 330, Google, 33, 40 almost, you know, so these price targets are generated um, using historical, historical um, ratios and then applying the forward um, earnings or revenue estimates uh, to that stock. So pretty good thing to put into, uh, put into screens. Um, just so you can get an idea of, you know, maybe what your potential potential upside is for a particular particular stock you're investigating. Um, I sort of started to talk about portfolios. This is um, this is a bit newer. So um, what you can do is add your add portfolios to Stock Labs and then track what uh what your returns and everything are or you can follow other people's portfolios that are in you know in the community which some people find helpful if there's a trader that you sort of like their style or you know you want to model things that they're doing um things that you're doing after what they're doing you can go and follow their portfolio so i just came in here and followed um followed several of them the quant i talked about uh so up 30% for the year. Like I said, it rebalances once a month, you know, and it's just, it's always the first trading day. So there's no market timing or anything to do with, um, you know, trying to make advantageous allocations. It's just whatever the prices are at that moment, you know, that's what you buy. And, you know, it's worked out pretty well so far, I guess, uh, for, uh, for fly. Uh, he also just came up with his, um, best ideas portfolio and this uh this portfolio was um it used to be something else that wasn't working out for him so he he changed it to a best ideas portfolio so that's why the um yeah so year to date he the the old strategy was down so then he mo he modified it made it best ideas and just these are basically the top 10 his top 10 ideas um at the moment looking out sort of longer term. Actually, this thing is down today, isn't it? Hmm. Down 1.7% today, but yeah. So a lot of people will follow this because, um, you know, if they're not, if, if they're not day trading or they, you know, obviously people have portfolios that they aren't day trading. Nobody day trades their entire, uh, their entire net worth. I mean, some people do, but most people are allocating money to different strategies. So this would be one that um, a lot of people might follow along with. Uh, watch lists, uh, you can build, you know, sort of along the same lines, watch lists um, with, any, with any of the criteria that you want. Um, I'll just go to this one. Uh, just so you see the view of it. Yeah, so it's the same sort of format. You can add columns to include other other data in the watch list that you want to you want to follow along with. Um, and then, lastly, we'll have or not lastly, but toward the bottom here. So, screener search. This is actually pretty powerful because um, you're able to search for companies based on keywords in the news. So say for instance, you're not gonna, you're not gonna use this every day, but when, when it is time to use it, it's, it's useful. So for instance, say when we had, um, I guess, um, let me think. I was trying to think of something more recent, but let me just use like COVID, when COVID first was becoming a news item. Um, you could come in here and search for say respiratory or um, whatever else you wanted to, whatever whatever the keywords were back then, I forget what they were. And then any stock that was um, having news in the last, you know, you could set it to whatever time frame. but say, say I wanted stuff in the past 24 hours. And yeah, so obviously now this has died down, uh, but Somebody give me a keyword. You can search for something. Um, coronavirus. Well, I just did. Uh, 
I was just doing rest, but yeah. Yeah, so there's not there's not a lot of news flow for stocks with, uh, you know, stocks aren't, you know, companies aren't releasing a lot of um, press releases saying that they're getting into coronavirus treatments or anything like that. That news flow has sort of dried up a little bit. Um, if we had something, if we had something a little more current, uh, I could show it. Uh, we could see if the Trump, if the Trump stocks are still doing anything. Um, no, this is probably just more general. Yeah. So any stock, I mean, this is- Yeah, the, uh, the PHUN is a Trump stock. Well, yeah, I mean, fun is fun is a Trump stock, but the, the list overall is, is kind of vanilla right now. But you get the idea, if you'd be able to come in here and type um, any number of keywords to um, to sort of zero in on the stocks that were running um, being associated with that current news item. Um, we also have our, you know, this is a chat room, Pelican room. Um, we have a lot of traders in here that, um, you know, all different experience levels. So some people have been in here a long time, years and years. Uh, so there's people you can sort of lean on for ideas or um, maybe just get input from as far as either getting criticized for your idea or congratulated on it, mostly, mostly criticized probably. If you buy something and tell people about it, they'll tell you you're an idiot for sure. Um, that's not 100% true, but you get the idea. There's banter and things. Um, if there's any questions as far as things that I talked about or things that um, you thought might get, you, you want to get covered or you thought you would see, but I didn't show, then um, now's the time. You can either type them in the chat or um, unmute yourselves and speak can up. You, uh, can, can you show what the oversold signal did during the recent downturn? Yeah, I can do that. Um, I'll go back to market overview and well, okay. So market overview, I'm gonna put it on 12 month. And the, yeah, so we talked about what these oversold signals mean sort of at the start. So we got down to an oversold threshold. Stock Labs rated the market as, as oversold. And then our forward returns since then were pretty good. Um, yeah, let me, okay, I have to go to 12 months. Wow, this is really, yeah. Okay, so 12 month, um, there's, one, there's one more from the 28th, but you saw we had the three signals from, um, from the chart and then, yeah. So it's gonna be up here. Yeah, so 12 month, 12 month. So three days back, three days back to back to back, oversold at, very, at the very end of September. And then from there, I'm pretty sure the market's gone straight up for October. I don't even think we really pulled back, pulled back that much at all at any point. So you can see from here, from the last one, September 30. So the market was at 42.30 basically, and where are we at now, 45. 60 almost um so what is that that's 200 you know 200 handles straight up so people will people will trade these signals all different ways some people use options some people just use um etfs some people a lot of people trade futures um some people if they're not trading indices directly you know they might put on just more general stock exposure um whatever, short volatility 
uh, works off of those signals. There's a whole bunch of, you know, depending on how you want to use a signal, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can, but the fact that you have it um, sort of is what gives you the opportunity to, to do that. Anybody else? I'm going to put, um, let's see, what time is it? Okay, so almost one o'clock. Not bad. Uh, I'm going to put the um, links to, whoops. Uh, I'm going to put the links to the sign up for sign up information in the chat. You can click on those, uh, and go to and check it out. Um, there's also, um, once you do sign up, if you do, you'll get, you'll start getting um some information as far as like tutorials we have like a whole um youtube channel that um will show you tutorial tutorials uh there will be market recaps things like that um that get put up um you could actually see all that stuff now without signing up but it'll get pushed to you um if you do there's also a written um faq that you can get to by clicking your name and clicking help so that'll take you to a written faq um, with screenshots and written out explainers that you can look at so you could read over sort of at your own pace um, yeah i didn't talk i didn't talk much about these other headers across the top i can do them real quick so seasonality i think is a thing that um, people are usually pretty curious about or not curious but they're I don't know, they're, in, they're interested in it because it's some sort of voodoo. Um, so you can see October, generally a pretty strong month. This looks back um, with 30 years, you know, 30 years almost worth of data. Um, so we're in sort of our end of year rally mode uh, based on seasonality. Um, September was supposed to be pretty weak and it sort of turned out that way. So actually I think it was, I don't know what the exact monthly return for September was, but um, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was sort of a tough month, um, but things have, you know, it bottomed out on that oversold signal and now we're taking off for October. So um, you see a lot of these statistics start to line up with each other. Um, you're going to have a hard time sort of messing it up uh, if I can put it that way. <laughs> um, I'll go back to, yeah, there's also financials. So any of the sort of more fundamental data that you want for the overall market will be populated in here. Um, again, you know, 30, 30 years worth of data, you see gross margins, free cash flows. And you notice when I went to an individual stock, all these same headers are up here. So you would have this for say Amazon or Costco or even little tiny stocks that no one's ever heard of will have all this data populated. Um, earnings is an earnings calendar. Um, this will show you everybody that's reporting that day or you know that morning or that night um, that you can go through if you're sort of have your eyes on making making plays around earnings dates. Um, and I think that. That's a lot of it. So yeah, again, if there's any questions, just fire them off now, or you can email me after the fact. Uh, I'll answer your emails pretty quickly. Um, don't be shy about that. It's not You won't be bothering me or anything. Um, and yeah, so one o'clock almost on the dot. If you guys All don't right. have anything, if you guys don't have no, anything, then I'll just end it. was it. good. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. All right, I will. Uh, I'm going to sign up for a try for the month. I'll uh, I'll do it online. Okay. Yeah, I put the I put the links right in the chat. You can click click to them right there, or it's um, just stocklabs.com will take you to the to the page. All right. Thanks a lot. I'll talk right. to you. All right. Bye.